Robert Osborne for the Movie Channel. Every time a film fails to make money, there's a lot of theorizing as to why. How? What happened? What went wrong? Frankie and Johnny right now, for instance. Everybody expected a blockbuster. It was based on a hit play. It starred Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer. It was directed by the man who made Pretty Woman. It also received some very positive reviews and good word of mouth when it opened. But no real business. Why? What happened? What went wrong? Well, a friend of mine has a theory. He said he didn't want to see it because while he likes Al Pacino and he likes Michelle Pfeiffer, he really didn't like the idea of Michelle Pfeiffer and Al Pacino. And it could be that simple. At least it was for my friend. And if Al and Michelle seem mismatched to him as a team, at least in Frankie and Johnny, well, it wouldn't be the first time Hollywood has badly mismatched some of its stars. I doubt that anybody was more mismatched than Humphrey Bogart and June Allison in a film called Battle Circus. He, of course, was tough, cynical bogey. She was famous for being the adorable, perky girl next door. Now, talk about your oil and water mix. You wouldn't expect Humphrey Bogart and June Allison to know each other, much less end up in a film together as a romantic team, but they did. And while both Bogart and Allison could draw millions of customers to the box office on their own, together, they didn't cause a ripple. Now, there are other matches that didn't strike sparks either, like Katherine Hepburn and Bob Hope. Hepburn always shown, of course, in comedies. She was at her very best with Cary Grant or Spencer Tracy. And Bob Hope's comedies were once a delight. He always worked with beautiful foils like Dorothy L'Amour or Joan Fontaine. But put Hope and Hepburn together, as producer Betty E. Box did in 1956 in Zilch. As the New York Times wrote about it, the offbeat casting of Miss Hepburn and Mr. Hope has resulted in something grotesque. It is simply horrible. You'll notice it's a film that neither Bob Hope or Katherine Hepburn ever mentions today. It's a mismatch they'd like to pretend never happened. But probably the oddest teaming of all time occurred in 1949. Jeanette McDonald, one of the most popular of all film stars, was beginning a kind of downward slide with her film career. Her operettas and upscale musicals were out of fashion. So what did they do? MGM put her in a film with Lassie, their dog star. Now Lassie's movie career was also kind of on the skids in those days. And the film they did together was called The Sun Comes Up. Now with it, MGM hoped to pull in all the remaining fans of both Jeanette McDonald and Lassie. But the plan backfired. Most of those who loved Jeanette McDonald films wouldn't be caught dead seeing a Lassie movie. And kids who loved those Lassie adventures wouldn't go near a film with a lot of operatic interludes. So The Sun Comes Up died. And alas, Jeanette McDonald never made another film. A year later, Lassie was also gone from the gates and the trees of MGM. But for all the frustrating mismatches in Hollywood's history, there is no denying that when it works, it can mean magic, pure magic, like Bogart and Bacall, or Tracy and Hepburn, Astaire and Rogers. And on December 31st, for added proof, just check out William Powell and Myrna Loy. They appeared together in 14 films and created great magic every time. On New Year's Eve, we're going to show six of those films, all six of their Thin Man films that Myrna Loy and William Powell made together as a team. And you will see why, firsthand, why they're considered one of Hollywood's greatest teams. Nothing mismatched about them. For the Movie Channel, I'm Robert Osborne. This will be one momentous summer for Vader Sultanfuss. Vader Sultanfuss. Tough break. I like my name. A precocious 11-year-old. Dad, didn't you say you need your prunes real bad? Growing up in the 70s in a funeral parlor. I always surround myself with people who I find intellectually stimulating. It all happens in the poignant... Hi, Grandma. ...tender, oh, humorous hey, drama... Hey, hey. Oh, Wow, this is savage. My girl. As filming began, these two ten-year-olds were complete strangers. Macaulay Culkin was a superstar. I didn't actually think that it was a big deal meeting him because, I mean, I just thought that it was just, um, like he was just one of our friends. And newcomer Anna Klumsky became my girl. Oh, she's you know, been great and everything. She's nice, you know. She 
gets along with us. Director Howard Zeef took his cast and crew to Central Florida, where they created the look and feel of small-town Pennsylvania. I think it's really a portrait of these two kids. One summer, her mother is dead. She's trying to find love from her father, who doesn't really know how to treat her. I'm running away. Where are you running to? California. Going to Hollywood to live with the Brady Bunch. I want to live with them, too. No, you can't. They have enough kids. You'll have to live with the Partridge family. Really? Dan Aykroyd plays her father, the mortician. There's sort of a, a myth that morticians are shunned, but in fact they're not. They are usually very wealthy and very influential in the community. The fact that they deal with death is just what they do for a living. It's like just a coroner or a doctor. It's, it's really a professional obligation. And Jamie Lee Curtis plays her father's girlfriend, the beautician. She brings something to that house that hasn't been there for 10 years, which is actual juice. I mean, there's something happening, and she has an attitude and, and an adventurous quality. Rarely do you see a movie where a young girl, 12, kind of begins to explore the changes that take place in her. Action! When they hear action, they immediately go into the scene and they're totally in character. They're after us! I am running faster! Hurry! Jump in the water! But I have my clothes on! Do it! They're playing the characters they play in the movie. They hang out together, they're fun. Great, 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 and wonderful. And as Mac is going to say, start making me and say, marvelous, wonderful, oh, marvelous, fantastic, oh, oh, it's hilarious. My girl. What do you say to some action? Is this what you're looking for? Romance. Misery. A little funny business. <laughs> So what do you say to a movie anytime you want one? Ah! Misery on the Movie Channel. Our name says it all. The Movie Channel's got great entertainment and great savings just for you. Every month, the Movie Channel gives you more for your entertainment dollar with over 100 movies, including blockbusters like Dances with Wolves, Look Who's Talking To, and Green Card plus classics and more. And now get extra entertainment value with a free coupon book with over $1,000 in savings. You'll save on movies and family vacations to Universal Studios Florida, where you'll experience Back to the Future The Ride, and to Universal Studios Hollywood for the new E.T. adventure. You'll save on travel with discounts on U.S. Air, the official airline of Universal Studios, hotels, cruises, and car rentals. Plus savings at your favorite fast food restaurants and more. To get your free coupon book with over $1,000 in savings, send your name and address on a 3x5 card along with your original January or February Movie Channel bill by April 30th to The Movie Channel Entertainment Values, P.O. Box 1116, Grand Rapids, Minnesota, 557451116. For the best entertainment value, stay tuned to The Movie Channel. Jake and I are getting married. Becky's wedding is sure to go off without a hitch. Dad's confident. It's ridiculous. Mom's ecstatic. Who the hell wants this cake you can't take? Her whole family is supportive. What do you got for collateral? It's just the tiniest details that are touched oh, yeah. and go. Okay, I don't want any ice cream. Alan Alda, Madeline Kahn, Joe Pesci, Ali Sheedy, and Molly Ringwald. In Betsy's wedding, part of Ho 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 Week. Playing tonight on the Movie Channel.